Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today's video is all about Xire Photo. It is an AI-based keywording tool that allows you to quickly and easily analyze your database of photos. It will automatically apply relevant keywords based on AI, taking a look at the content of the photo, which is gonna save you, frankly, a ton of time. I talked about this in a recent newsletter, and if you'd like to subscribe to that, there's a link down below. And I got so many questions and comments and replies and questions and comments and replies about it. I was honestly kind of blown away. So many people were saying, I need to know more about this tool. What are you talking about? So this video is a high level kind of overview of what Xire Photo is, what it does for you and how you can use it. It does integrate into your workflow. There are basically two versions, a standalone version, which is what I'm gonna be using in this video and also a plugin version built for Lightroom. But regardless, either one of these you can use in conjunction with Lightroom if that's part of your workflow. Essentially, XR Photo will automatically add keywords to your photos based on AI examining the contents of the photo, which is frankly going to save you a ton of time. I had a recent example where this would have saved me a lot of time. My wife said, hey, where's that photo of me and our daughter and da da da? And I was like, uh, gosh, um, I don't know. I need to go look through photos and folders and hard drives and figure it out. I didn't find the photo. If I had XR Photo, I would have found it like that. Let me show you how it works. Um, basically, you add folders. Again, I'm in the standalone version. You can add folders to XR and it will automatically analyze them. So I've got this folder on the left-hand side. You can see it says demo files. That's a folder that I keep on my desktop that I use for video demos here on YouTube. It's got lots of different photos in it. It's got, uh, you know, 605 if you look. It says all photos, 605, and this is the only folder I currently have. But I went ahead and added this folder to Xire, and it automatically adds keywords and tags. So if I click on one of these photos, you can see on the right-hand side, here are a number of automatically generated keywords that are added. Clouds, nature, romantic, silhouette, sky, and sunset. It did all that automatically. Now you can go in and also add your own keywords. I'm gonna show you all that in this video. First thing I wanna do is kinda of show you what you do. So if I click add, I can go browse my desktop. In this case, I've got a small folder of four different Apple Pro Raw files that I shot with my iPhone. So I'm gonna say open. You've got some options here to include subfolders. There aren't any, but I'm gonna leave that checked. Analyze photos, as it says there, necessary to load keywords. I'm gonna leave that checked, and I would recommend doing that unless for some reason you just wanted to add them to XR and then come back and add the keywords later, which you can do. Uh, create previews, etc. I'm gonna go ahead and click start. It adds them automatically and it tells you that four photos are found. It took one second, very small folder. But here's an example of what you can do. If I click on this one, you can see on the right hand side, it added the keywords dark and sign. This one added the keywords garden, nature, plant, tree, and wood. You can see that that's a nature shot. And here's a city street as well. It added architecture, building, city, city street, and unsaturated. So you can see it quickly goes through and does that. But I can click all four of these. And what I want to do is add a keyword, which is Portland, because these were all taken in Portland and also in Oregon. So I've now added those keywords. They're all part of these photos. And so I could search by that if I wanted to. So that's how you quickly add and adjust particular folders. But what I want to do is go back to my demo files folder and continue my walkthrough. Um, up in the top, you can search by different metadata, whether I've done ratings or color labels, things like that. Metadata here, I've got an option to search by camera. So let's say I want to search for anything I've taken with my Fujifilm X100V. In this folder, I've got two images. So there you go. There they are. Let's say I want to look for things. Gosh, I've got some photos I know I took a while back with my Sony A7R 3 Let me find those. I click on that and you can see that all of those photos taken with that camera that are in this folder are found automatically. Now again, what I recommend doing is taking your time, adding your folders from your external hard drive or wherever it is that you keep your photos, add them all so that this database of keywords can be added up over time. I'm gonna go ahead and clear that filter. You could also do by capture date, things like that. I'm gonna leave that cleared. I'm gonna go back over here because what I wanna do is show you some of the powerful search capabilities. If you click in the upper right hand corner, you can see you've got find by keyword, find faces. You've got a couple of other options as well. And then down below, you've got a keyword hierarchy. Let me show you this. So if you click on where it says Xire, it sorts by either content or photography. So if I click on content, you can see based on this folder that's currently selected, 
There are six photos that it considers animals, 289 is considering architecture, three that are food, 89 that are people, 10 that are technology, things like that. Under place, these are further drop downs, abandoned place, let's click on that. There's five, those do look fairly abandoned. There's different indoor options too that is considered a library, which is actually a bookstore, but it's got books in it. It figured out that. Four that it considers a restaurant, that's pretty close. And again, everything is not perfect. It's using AI to analyze a scene and figure things out. It's got various vehicles, so if I click on bicycle, you can see these photos all have bicycles in them. Eight photos with canoes, right? That's, that's picking up all that. These are all keywords that Exire added automatically, and that's in this content section. But there's also this photography section. So there's six that is considered aerial photographs, which while these weren't taken with a drone, they were from an elevated viewpoint, so it does appear to be aerial photographs. Six with bokeh, right? There you go. 26, it's considering bright. 15, it's considering colorful. 250, it considers dark, which is pretty common for me. I tend to shoot uh, exposed to the left, so my photos typically end up being dark. Six with leading lines. Again, these are all keywords that XR has added automatically. But the cool thing is, that's the XR menu. There's also the custom menu. So I can go in. I've added a few keywords. Here's two that I've tagged with Austin. One I tagged with female. That's a silhouette. Six I tagged with Milky Way. So I went in just like I did in that other folder for Apple, uh, the Pro Raw folder that I added. In this folder, you... Um, you know, I've added some keywords like New Mexico to this one, four to Portland. Oh, hey, guess what? I'm actually examining all of uh, both of these folders at this time. Prague, I added 30 photos that all are tagged Prague. So you can go in and specify and be very targeted if you want to do that. It's obviously not going to know that these were all taken in Prague. So if you click on one of these, you can see it's got architecture, building, and unsaturated, but I added Prague. You can see how the more blue colored keywords are the ones that Xire added and the little bit uh, grayish ones are ones that I've added. So if you click on things like this, lots of different keywords that are added automatically and yet Prague is there because that's something that I added myself. By the way, when you're in a photo, if you want, you can go in and click on this and further adjust or refine uh, metadata. So you can add contact info, content, uh, more information about the image, even a copyright owner, things like that if you'd like to. It's very powerful, very comprehensive, and frankly, it's a massive time saver. Now I'm gonna go back to my demo files folder and I wanna do a couple of other searches. So you can, that's the keyword hier hierarchy I just went through. In the upper left, you can do find by keywords. So this is very cool. If you click on that, you can see all those different content and photography things that were keyword based that XR added are here. And so you can go in and search by that or you can uh, also go in and search uh, based on the custom p keywords that you add yourself. So if I wanna search for aerial photography, if I click on that, you can see that's there. I'm gonna take Route 66 out. I'm gonna hit Start Search, and it's coming up with those same keywords. I'm gonna go back over here, and I can do aerial photography, and then you can also add the color blue and hit Start Search, and three of those are considered blue by XR. So it allows you to really refine your search and target things based on dominant colors. Maybe I wanna search for dominant color of red and red only. I'm gonna do that, hit start search, and it's finding red dominant colors in my photo based on that keyword search. So it gives you a lot of power, a lot of control. If you add nature, for example, I'm gonna take red out, but add nature. But you've also got all these other options where you can see it's picking up a lot of different things. And so I'm just gonna do nature and see what that comes up with. And it comes up with a lot because I take a lot of landscape photos. When I travel, you can see how that's powerful and able uh, to allow you to basically specify what you're looking for. Now I'm gonna go back to this main folder of demo files. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna go in and say find faces. So here is where you can refine things. And I could have uh, quickly done that search that my wife asked about. Hey, where's that photo of me and our daughter, blah, blah, blah. Well, I could come in and do sing single portrait, teenager, young adult. I can turn this on or off. I'm gonna say, you know, instead of male, I'm gonna say female. And you can do no smile or smile. I'm gonna leave that untouched but single portrait, teenager, young adult, female, and I'm gonna search the whole database. I'm gonna start my search and it finds these. So two of these are my daughter. I've got two different uh, versions of this photo taken obviously just moments apart. The other ones are not my photos, but I can go in and let's say I find this 
I find this photo and there, there's one photo that I wanna do. But once you specify a photo, you can go in and click find people. You can see it keys in on the face. I wanna search the whole database for that face. I'm gonna hit start search. And it's now come up with two additional photos of my daughter. The interesting thing is this is a profile photo and she, this was taken when she was seven or eight, whereas the one that I started with, these two on the left, she was about 18. And so even though these are about 10 years apart, it's actually going through the database, identifying that face and saying, hey, I think this is the same face as the one that you're trying to find. And guess what? It is. So very powerful, very comprehensive search. And again, this is just a search within my database, which is 600 files. But what I need to do is go add 200, 300,000, how many photos I have in my full library, add that so I could quickly go through and search and find the specific targeted photo that my wife was looking for that day. Would have saved me a lot of time and would have been able to help her immediately. And by the way, when it comes to search, you notice there's two tabs here. There's folders, or I keep going over here and clicking on my demo files folder, but there's also results. So these are the different results that I've found, right? I, I search by nature, I search by red, I search by aerial photography, blue, and just aerial photography. I search by faces, and I did a find people. So it's keeping searches over here for you. So you can go back and refer to them if you want to. You can go back and find uh, or relocate the different searches that uh, you may have done in the past. As I click on these, you can see that it's bringing up those various search results. So it's basically keeping a history for you. You can, of course, come in here and just hit the X to remove that if you don't care about keeping that search there in your history. Now, there's a couple other things to be aware of. This works locally. This is not going to the cloud and back. This is locally uh, run, so it's running on your machine with your photos. It's not having to go to the cloud to do some kind of intelligence. So that's nice. Also, you can uh, store metadata to an XMP sidecar file, which could be read by Lightroom. So if I take the keywords that are added to this photo, I could go up here and say photo, store metadata, and then that could write it to an XMP sidecar file, which could be picked up by uh, apps like Lightroom or other apps that would read an XMP sidecar file. So it allows you to work across multiple apps, which is gonna be useful for folks like myself which um, you know, I use a lot of different apps. And this is a great way to kind of sit on top of all those various apps, have my keywords and my search across my entire library. And the other thing I've found myself in the situation in the last couple of years is different pieces of my library on different hard drives. I'm working to consolidate and centralize everything into one, but I could plug in multiple hard drives and run XR across those as well to minimize my search time and search results, even though I may have things spread across uh, multiple drives. So here's another example of how I would use this. I've got a group of files I took all across London on a trip a couple of years ago, and I'm gonna go through and highlight every one of them. Every one, I'm looking at these photos to make sure, but yeah, every one of these photos I just highlighted were taken in London or somewhere in England. And so I can go into keywords, and I'm gonna add keywords, and I'm gonna add UK and I'm going to add England and I'm going to add United Kingdom as well. Kingdom, if I could spell it. And so every one of these photos has now picked up those keywords. Now, some of these were Southern England, like at the top, but some of these were actually in London proper. And so I want to specify the London photos. So I'm going to select them separately. And that's going to be every one of these photos. And you can see when I click on them, they've all already got England and UK and United Kingdom because I added those. But now that I've slimmed down the selection of photos, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna type London as well so that I can have all of those be tagged with London. So now if I just go back to my main folder and I wanna search by keyword, I can type in the keyword London. I've got 38 photos that are tagged with London. I click on that, I'm gonna remove nature. It saved that from my previous search. I'm gonna hit start search, and there's my 30 photos I just tagged with the keyword London. So like I said, while it won't pick up place names, it won't know that that's specifically London or the Shard or Big Ben or whatever it may be. You can add those things, but it does pick up a lot of other things. So for example, this one picked up architecture and unsaturated. This one picked up a few more things, including church. Hey, that is a church. Religion 
it says Tower Bridge. That's not Tower Bridge. So again, it's not 100% specific, but it's interesting how it's picking things up. You can see as I click on these, this actually says Telephone Booth. I think that's pretty cool. So XR, that's a quick overview of how you can use it to go in and be specific and targeted about your keywording and tagging, but also your search, allowing you to save a lot of time finding images. So if a client calls and says, hey, I need a copy of this image, or somebody wants to license a photo, or just a family member is looking for something specific, if you've got XR having helped you keyword and tag all of these images, you'll be able to go in quickly, find them, and get that taken care of, saving yourself, frankly, a lot of time. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of how you can use XR in your own workflow. I need to now go start adding all my drives and all my folders, which is a few, maybe, I don't know, 250, 300,000 photos, get them all into XR and start speeding up how I keyword and tag and search for images. Hope it gives you an idea about how it works, my friends. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it very much. Take care of yourselves. If you've got any questions, leave those questions and comments down below. I'll do my best to answer. And until the next time, I'll see you, my friends. Take care and adios.